Feel free to tag the following accounts. Facebook, Koinonia Global. Instagram, at Koinonia.abuja. Let's make welcome Apostle Joshua Selma. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap this morning. Is that how you're celebrating the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Rose of Sharon, Alpha, Omega, beginning, the end, the captain of our salvation, the healer, restorer, the giver of rest, round about. Is someone excited? Let, let's give Jesus a big, big, big hand clap this morning hallelujah the psalmist said i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord because there are things you only find in his presence the bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand pleasures even forevermore i am honored again to be bringing the word this morning and while standing, I still want us to honor our father and our mother, Reverend Sam Abueji. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I equally want to communicate my honor to all who um, are standing. Thank you so very much. Thank you for this opportunity in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we pray? Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to hear your word. The Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. We have come this morning with hearts humbled, meek, open to receive. We pray that you will speak to us in the name of Jesus. And I pray that all it takes for us to step into the reality of rest on every side, release unto us this morning in Jesus' name. I decree and declare upon everyone hearing that there is the hearing of faith and the walking of miracles and we vow as always that you'll be glorified in our midst in Jesus mighty name we pray is it all right if I ask you to walk up to five people and prophesy rest on every side for them will that be fair enough look for a good neighbor a smiling neighbor a happy neighbor this morning and tell them I prophesy rest on every side rest on every side rest on every side rest on every side did they reply you if they didn't tell you anything prophesy to yourself say in the name of jesus i experience rest on every side one more time say in the name of jesus I experience rest on every side so shall it be for you in Jesus name Lord we pray that you help us speak to us in Jesus name please you may be gloriously seated you may be gloriously seated I love to teach the word of God because contained in the teaching of the word of God is the wisdom of God and the Bible speaking about wisdom says that wisdom is the principal thing it says therefore get wisdom and that in all your getting it says get understanding exalt her and she shall promote you she shall put a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her. Wisdom speaking says, By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me nobles rule. He says, With me are riches, wealth and honor, yet durable riches and righteousness. The wisdom of God is profound because when we access his wisdom, even from his word, then we are able to do exploits. May that be your testimony in Jesus' name. I'll take off from where we left up yesterday night. And for those of you who were not here or for the sake of those connecting by way of television, we began to discuss along the line of the team, first acknowledging yesterday 
that it is not unusual for men to be plagued with all kinds of calamities and challenges the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that um, as far as our sojourn on earth is concerned there will be many 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 afflictions in fact the bible puts it this way that many are the afflictions of the righteous he says but the lord delivered him from them all we examined a few examples of men and women even righteous people who went through seasons of pain distress discomfort and afflictions in the bible considered abraham the nation of israel the famine in samaria naomi and ruth we looked at the life of naaman the captain in syria the woman with the issue of blood and so on and so forth we also consider the life of job as the clearest example of a man who had been troubled on every side the bible says that it is possible that a man can be troubled not just in your finances alone not just in your marriage not just in your health not just in your career but that it is possible that a man can be troubled on every side but we also did establish the fact that in christ there is a possibility for walking in total victory the bible says now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph are we still together and then we agreed yesterday that to have rest means the following number one it means security rest means security number two that rest means freedom from and dominion over troubles and fears rest means freedom from and dominion over troubles and fears number three we agree that rest means peace that in all your definitions of the word rest if peace is not captured your definition is not whole rest means peace then we also agreed answering the question can a believer experience rest on every side is there a possibility that in a believer's walk you can experience rest on every side and we answer that question from genesis chapter 24 and verse 1 the bible says and abraham was old genesis 24 and verse 1 abraham was old and well stricken in age and your bible says and the lord had blessed him in all things all things not just some things once upon a time in his life he had tragedies around childbirth and several other things but at the end of his life we are encouraged by the end of his state that the lord had blessed him in all things so yes it is possible for a believer to experience rest round about and then we went further to discuss the keys that experiencing rest on every side is predicated upon our understanding and walking in keeping with certain keys now when we mention the word key to the believer and in the kingdom a key represents access that which gives you access to a realm that which gives you access to a dimension that which gives you access to a possibility jesus was speaking and he said and i will give you the keys of the kingdom i did point out yesterday that there is only one key to the kingdom and that key is not a thing it's not a principle is a person his name is jesus he is the key to the kingdom but now that you are in the kingdom there are the keys of the kingdom they represent the mysteries by which the saints command results the mysteries by which the saints command exploits in matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus is speaking and he says it has been given unto you matthew 13 11 to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven hallelujah so your excelling as a believer depends on your access to these keys the mysteries of the kingdom and as touching the issue of rest on every side we examine the following keys number one that the first key to step into rest roundabout rest on every side is the decision to be spiritually minded please do not forget 
the decision to be spiritually minded according to romans chapter 8 and verse 6 the bible says for to be carnally minded is death and to be spiritually minded is life and peace and we further explain that being spiritually minded involves a number of things first your encounter with jesus the son of the living god who himself is called the prince of peace to be spiritually minded begins with your encounter with jesus in matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 jesus himself is speaking and he says come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden he leaves you with an assurance he says and i will give you rest he is able to give rest only to those who come to him not just those who need rest not just those who desire rest you must come unto him like the prodigal son return back to his father and he found rest and i did say in addition to your encounter with jesus you must have a robust and a healthy prayer life hallelujah these are the keys that all together help a man to become spiritually minded the strength of your prayer life luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always ought to pray and not to faint first thessalonians 5 17 it says pray without ceasing james 5 13 is any man afflicted the bible says let him pray mark 11 24 it says what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them hallelujah jesus prayed the early apostles prayed it was customary for the church to pray it was part of the apostolic model that was revealed and handed over by Jesus to the apostles and then to the early church in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the Bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer that was the apostolic model that was given to them in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 the Bible says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word the believer who does not pray habitually who does not pray as a kingdom responsibility will remain a victim of the vicissitudes of life it is a fact hallelujah we pray for many reasons one of them is for our growth and transformation the primary assignment of prayer is for the believers growth and transformation Luke chapter 9 and verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed the he being Jesus the Bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering men can pray into superior versions of themselves a weak you can become a strong you through prayer a timid you can become a powerful fearless you through prayer a carnal flesh sensory you can become a spiritual version of you through prayer prayer is able to create evolution and transformation that believers can become more superior versions of themselves when we pray we did say yesterday again that in addition to prayer we must become students of scripture the bible says and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 it says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to number one build you up and then number two to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified when we study scripture we become enlightened enlightened to be enlightened means that the eyes of your understanding like paul prayed over the church in ephesus that the eyes of your understanding is flooded with light so that you may know the hope of your calling and the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe believers must become students of scripture 
this kingdom the life of God that we call eternal life the Zoe life is only released experientially on the strength of knowledge this life that we have received in Christ can only find expression in our lives when we access the riches in that life through knowledge the Bible says according as his divine power have given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness then it says through the knowledge the knowledge of Jesus Christ that means in ignorance even if saved your life will not become a beauty that will bring glory to God in fact the Bible puts it this way in Galatians 4 it says an heir for as long as he's a child he differed nothing from a slave are we together or a servant even though he be lord of all and the characteristic feature of children is ignorance the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but the rod of correction will drive it far from him so when a believer is void of knowledge high level spiritual illumination you will only wish things and never be able to walk in that experience are we learning now so to be spiritually minded involves your encounter with Jesus Christ involves the health of your prayer life consistency in prayer consistency in the ministry of the word and of course your passion for the house of God learning he says I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord it was the psalmist who said oh Lord you are my God he said early will I seek you my heart longs for you as in a dry and a weary land it says to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary there are things you only experience in the house of God number two the second key as we discussed yesterday that is responsible for accessing rest roundabout is that you must learn to live by faith the just shall live by faith can someone say that please the just shall live by faith one more time please the just shall live by faith the bible says in first john 5 and verse 4 this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world it says and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith hallelujah I told us yesterday that faith in one word is obedience no matter what definition you bring to explain faith if it does not capture obeying God you are not walking by faith two definitions yesterday we considered for faith number one that faith is the confidence you have in God and the integrity of his word the confidence that you have in God and the integrity of his word number two that faith is the name given to the action of obedience that demonstrates that you believe the name given to the action of obedience not just the believing the action of obedience that proves that you believe God if it be thou bid me come and he said come and Peter began to walk on water hallelujah I did say yesterday and it's important that we take note of this that God is only committed to what he said God is only committed to what he said he does not just do what we want he does not just do what we desire he does not just do what we pray for he does what we desire and what we pray for that is consistent with what he has said are we together God is not some slave or a robot or a machine that is just committed to doing anything fulfilling the lust of our desires no the Bible says and this is the confidence that we have in him that when we ask anything in accordance to his will that he heareth us there is a condition 
the assignment of the power of God is to walk within the jurisdiction of the will of God in fact the principal assignment of the power of God is to bring all things that are in disalignment to the will of God to become lined up with the will of God so outside of the will of God the power of God has no assignment it's important that we understand this God is only committed to what he has said so if you can find what God has said you have also found what God will do let me repeat it again if you can find what God has said you have also found what his power can do Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1 and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken he did not just visit Sarah as she desired he visited Sarah because he said he would and he did unto Sarah because he said he would Genesis 1 and verse 3 and God said creation only started the moment God said recreation only started the moment God said nothing moves in the believers life until God says hallelujah I want you to believe that your coming here in this conference and this convention is not just because of the routine but that God has spoken already and if God has spoken that he desires to bring rest round about then it means that that must become your experience it is your responsibility to insist by faith Lord you said it I have come I have come to the feast let me experience that rest take it down for me please if you have said it then you will do it you have a track record of keeping your word you're not about you know that song help me you are mighty Listen, this is the part I want you to hear. There is nothing you, you cannot, cannot do. Help me. There is no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. There is nothing, there is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, you have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. God looks at an idol worshiper called Abraham coming from Ur of the Chaldeans and he begins to speak to him in Genesis chapter 12. I will make your name great. You will be a great nation. I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curseth you and he says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed today the three top religions in the world have come out of that one man Christianity Islam Judaism all came out of that one man simply because God said you shall be great it didn't matter what happened again God had spoken in the name of Jesus I bring a word of hope for someone if you have not yet seen what my father has said concerning you hold on his word does not fail it may take time but if he has spoken i want you to believe him the god who told you you will be proud of your children forget about what you are seeing now my bible says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be like it says for our light afflictions which is but for a moment that walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory while we look not at the things that are unseen 
or a seen or for the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal and the things that are unseen are eternal. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Faith in God. I believe him and I will stake my life obeying him. The Bible says if you be willing and obedient, there is good in every land. Your portion only comes to you, not just by political connection. It comes by obedience because vain is the help of man. The psalmist said, it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. He said, but he giveth his beloved sleep. A hey, woe betides a man who tries to accomplish anything outside of the assistance of God. No, many have tried it and it did not work. The help of man is truly vain. It is only God who can lift men. It is only God who can help men. He is called Ebenezer, the stone of help. hallelujah number three very quickly so all that i've said so far is a recap of yesterday's teaching now let's go to tonight's teaching or today this morning number three what is the third key for experiencing rest on every side are you ready engaging praise with understanding the third key that controls the manifestation of rest roundabout, engaging praise, the mystery of praise with understanding. Praise with understanding. Psalm 47 and verse 7. The Bible says, For God is the king of all the earth. Then it says, Sing ye praises, not as a tradition, not as a church ritual. Sing it with this understanding that God is the king of all the earth. You get that now? That there is an understanding that sponsors praise. That when I'm singing, I'm not singing just to a political figure, not just some ambassador of a nation. I am singing to the king of the ages, the one who can manipulate all things to my advantage. Let me declare over someone here. Allah will turn your life around. Allah is turning things around. Is turning things around. In the name of Jesus, this will be the song you will be singing back home. You will sing it and people will say, why are you dancing? And you will tell them, I am praising the King who has turned my life around, who has given me rest round about, rest round about. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream our mouths were filled with laughter and they said among the hidden the lord has done great things for them he says the lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the naked my bible says that they that sow in tears they will reap in joy i prophesy to someone may my god give you rest round about may my god give you rest round about in the name of Jesus. It is true that God can turn a man's life around. It is true that God can turn a business around. It is true that God can turn a destiny around. It is true that God can turn the entire trajectory of a man. If you do not believe this, then you are not a Christian. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth it says then the Bible now brings a very tragic scenario verse 2 it says now the earth was without form it was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep 
it is from the Hebrew expression tohu wa bohu confusion and chaos my Bible says and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters then verse 3 it says and God said the literal Hebrew rendition is and the talking spirit said light be and the Bible says there was light now I don't know about you but I have learned a very powerful principle and interestingly I learned it by my interaction with the West particularly the Yoruba nation when you go for a wedding there are people who beat drums and dance around you I'm sure everyone has seen those kinds of people they usually want you to do something for them and usually you didn't plan to give them anything but the way they sing and call your name they say all kinds of nice things about you who is that man who has taken care of children and you feel guilty for leaving them without rewarding them when you want to get into the car then they dance again then they sing again then they call your name they remind you that you are kind they remind you that you are loving they remind you that you are too blessed to leave them in that condition and even without planning you will not know when you reach down and bring out something from your pocket and give them once they collect they are done with you they go to the next person if a man can be moved by praise how much more the God of heaven hallelujah do you know listen a prophet's head went as a reward because a young girl danced before a king John the Baptist the greatest of all prophets that man could not kill this man the Bible says of all the prophets there was none as great as John not Elijah not Moses not Ezekiel not Jeremiah and a little girl dances before the king praising him and the king said what should I give you even up to half of my kingdom kings were not foolish people this is what praise can do hallelujah listen to me for someone after this session and this convention you may need to go back home go and write everything that has mocked God lock the door and begin to dance and praise around it it may not make sense but listen to me when you begin to dance before the king the Bible says when the church listen please when the church prayed over Peter it was an angel that came to the prison and loosed his bands and brought him out but your Bible says at midnight Paul and Silas in the same prison the difference is that they did not only pray they now sang and this time it was not angels that came God himself came and the Bible says that they rattled the foundation of the prison because who can stand when he comes what door can stand when he comes the door was it was rooted from his foundation and the Bible says and all doors open say it after me all doors open one more time all doors open that includes financial doors that includes doors of fruitfulness that includes doors of jobs can I prophesy to someone in your praise may all doors open in your praise may all doors open please sit down please don't you think I'm just shouting to entertain those who know this mystery have mastered the art of taming life like an animal bad report from your office carry that report and drop it on the ground you don't have to be a musician get some mess get some music that someone has already done lock yourself in the room and say Satan you will not see my tears the Bible says he's glorious in holiness he's fearful in praises you want to see the mighty God begin to praise him you want to see the mighty God begin to sing unto him you want to see the God that is jealous over his saints praise now hear me hear me please many people dance in church and that is wonderful many people sing in church the reason why it does not produce power 
is because it is rather a ritual that is not supported by understanding are we together there are unbelievers who can sleep for every part of the service until prayer starts they so dance and you are wondering who are you dancing to the secret to releasing the power of praise is not the act of singing and dancing I tell you I sense the power of God in this place let me prophesy again to someone I don't know what door has refused to open but in the name of Jesus I stand upon the grace here and I say it again in your praise you will not cry again in your praise you will not cry again mama in your praise you will not cry again sir I speak to you as one sent by the Lord that your tears comes to an end now the Bible says go weeping and just for a night but joy comes with the morning may all doors open for you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God may doors open for you in the name of Jesus Christ praise Psalm 67 from verse 5 to 7 from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai. from the Sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. I from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Please give it to us very quickly Psalm 67 let the people praise thee O God let the people praise thee verse 6 then shall the earth that means the earth has increased but it will not just come because you desire it there is a mystery in the spirit that forces the earth to yield its increase and that the, the earth shall yield its increase and even our God shall bless us even our God next verse please it says God shall bless us as a result of our praise and all the earth the ends of the earth shall fear him for the kind of thing he will do in your life let me speak to someone stop crying you have cried from January till November you have one more month left Turn it into a month of praise. Turn it into a month of praise. Crying does not help. It may comfort, but it does not deliver. Hallelujah. Praise. Let's consider the scripture where we got the anchor scripture for the convention. I like this. Second Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 21. May I please request for your attention as we read. We're reading 21 down to 30. The Bible says, And when he had consulted with the people, this was in the days of Jehoshaphat. Remember, there were nations that had ganged up, come against God's people. The Bible says he appointed singers. There are battles that you do not need a sword and a spear. You will, you will be defeated under that condition. There are times where the challenges are bigger than you. At those points, you need to keep your sword and keep your spear and carry your instruments of praise. The Bible says that should praise the beauty of his holiness. And they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercies endure forever. Next verse, please. And when they began to sing, and to praise the Lord to praise the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon Moab and Mount Seir which were against Judah and they were smitten watch this for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly destroy and to slay them 
and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir everyone helped destroy another can you imagine these were intelligent warriors what turned their minds around that is what praise can do next verse when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness they looked unto the multitude and behold they were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped next verse and when Jehoshaphat and the people came to take away the spoils of them they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies do you go to war with riches do you carry your treasures to war this is what praise can do which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away and they were three days can you imagine in gathering the spoil it was so much 26 and on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of baraka for they were for there they blessed the lord therefore the name of the place is called the valley of baraka unto this day we're reading to 30 27 and they return watch this every man of judah and jerusalem and jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to jerusalem with joy for the lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies 28 and they came to jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the lord two more verses and the fear of god was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the lord fought against the enemies of israel please read verse 30 if you are a believer ready one to read so the realm of jehoshaphat was quiet for his god gave him rest round about i want you to read that scripture again this time around you will put your name are you ready so the realm of joshua selman was quiet for his god gave him rest round about shout a believing amen shout another believing amen please be seated when the saints understand the power that is in praise with understanding the understanding there is that you are praising the king there was one woman in the bible who died barren and the reason for her barrenness was she laughed to scorn a king who was dancing before the god who had made him king the bible says he danced in such an undignified manner she looked at him and said you are compromising the ethics of royalty kings don't dance like this and he said i am dancing before the god who took the kingdom from your father and gave it unto me my bible says god heard her and she died barren hallelujah you can sing your way to victory you can rejoice your way to victory my bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous show me a man who refused to stop his praise i show you a man who victory cannot stand against number four this will be the final point so i've given you three keys number one being spiritually minded number two living by faith number three engaging praise with understanding are you ready for number four just a moment i want you to get this one the fourth and final principle that i will share with you this is an irrefutable kingdom principle that commands rest on every side is called the covenant of service the covenant of service the covenant of service exodus chapter 23 please from verse 25 to 26 i want to show you how believers find rest in this kingdom and ye shall serve the lord that is your part and your god shall bless your bread and your water is that in your bible and i will take 
take sickness away from the midst of thee next verse please there shall nothing cast her young nor be barren in thy land and then it says the number of your days i will fulfill believers please hear me there is something called the covenant of service job 36 and verse 11 may i request that we read it please when we find it projected job 36 11 ready one to read please if they obey and serve him uh-huh they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure what does it mean to serve god to serve god does not mean to come to church no coming to church does not necessarily mean serving god most believers come to church and they believe by coming to church they are serving god let me tell you what it means to serve the lord to serve the lord means that your time your energy your resources and your everything must participate directly in this project called kingdom come in this project of the revelation of jesus and the glorification of the same you are not serving the lord if your time your energy your resources all kinds of resources intellectual resources financial resources influence and access if your all does not contribute to making his program happen you are not serving god even if you are in church you can serve a man and not serve god you can serve a church and not serve god the reward is only for those who serve god the covenant of service there was a woman in the bible who was so benevolent in her giving she was so part of encouraging the move of the early church that the bible tells us that one time she died and when she died the bible says widows and other women came and they told the apostle this woman cannot die who will be the one to continue this act of kindness and benevolence the apostle was so touched and that woman came back to life ladies and gentlemen there are people who are unkillable by reason of the extent of their contribution towards kingdom come your bible says i shall not die then it says but leave and declare the works of the lord that means if your life is not participating directly in world evangelization if your life is not participating directly in the maturity of the saints if your life is not participating directly in territorial transformation you are not serving god for these are the three facets of the great commission the great commission is divided into three number one is world evangelization number two the maturity of the saints number three the transformation of territories and society if your life is not involved in any of this i hate to be a bearer of bad news but you are not serving god there are people who the devil has no power over these are men who have literally given themselves to the service of the king in my definition of ministry i don't define ministry with respect to your ability to stand behind a pulpit holding a mic and speaking to an audience that is not my definition of ministry i define ministry as any activity that is motivated by your love for jesus and intended to make him known it is called ministry if that is business it is ministry if that is parenting it is ministry provided it is motivated by your love for jesus and the intention is to see jesus revealed it is called ministry so i can be behind the pulpit a good preacher but i may not be in ministry ministry is not vetted just by the spirituality of the activity my motif do i love jesus and do i love his people and the goal for the singing the goal for the teaching the goal for the business 
is it to bring him glory and to advance the cause of his kingdom if so then you are serving ladies and gentlemen please hear me god is calling us into a covenant partnership through service there are people who call upon the name of the lord once and he will answer in a way by fire do you know why because their lives are too significant to the kingdom come project many of us here are directors many of us here had our own businesses and our own companies and help me for a moment how many of you know that if you run a company you had a company that has say a staff a structure of 500 or a thousand people if there is need to downsize what would be the principal basis for downsizing inefficiency am i right on that inefficiency becomes the principal consideration for downsizing you will seldom downsize people who are the the nerve the, the nerve center of that organization do you know that there are people today who on account of the value and contribution that they bring to certain corporations even when they tender their resignation their superiors receive it and keep it and negotiate with them at dinner and lunch and say listen if it's a pay raise we will give you a salary raise but do not leave this organization was that not what happened between jacob and laban jacob said leave me i want to go but laban used divination to to find out the reason behind his prosperity and he was told that the presence of jacob was the reason why he was blessed and he kept manipulating using all kinds of things to keep jacob there there are men who are the epitome of blessings themselves and that happens because of the degree of your contribution can i tell you there are people because of their commitment to serving god when the devil wants to come to bring shame and reproach the jealousy of god will answer and say who wants to touch this one who has been the principal financier behind my program who then will bring the finances and god will arise the bible says let god arise watch this it says and let not your enemies his enemies i did a teaching back home let me define for you who god's enemy is god's enemy may not necessarily be your definition god's enemy is anyone including a believer who becomes a perpetual hindrance to the manifestation of his purposes it's called god's enemy that's why when he appeared to joshua joshua said are you for us or against us he said neither that's not how i walk whoever is part of my program becomes an ally with me so when the bible says let god arise before you pray that prayer make sure you are not god's enemy because if he does arise all his enemies will scatter you become a friend of god when your life is committed to serving the lord i love him and i serve him today not because i'm a preacher even if he never called me to the work of the ministry i have given my life in total surrender to serving his purposes in whatever way i can not everybody will be a preacher but let me tell you this there are three categories of serving the lord and then we pray as i begin to wrap up number one in this end time there will be three categories of people who will be called servants indeed one those who are called prophetic intercessors they have the mandate of praying his program over nations over territories over four square the program of god is at the mercy of prophetic intercessors when god does not find the people who can pray down his program his purposes will be aborted again and again prophetic intercessors men and women in the similitude of Anna the prophetess we must know how to pray the program of God what is the next program of God for Foursquare you must begin to pray it your kingdom come your will be done number two the second set of those who will be serving the Lord are those who will step into the system and represent him as witnesses those who will step into the system we call them the seven mountains the mountain of religion 
education, media, politics. I was so blessed listening to our father and our uncle who was um, communicating his perspectives about believers participating in politics was such an intelligent presentation. Hallelujah. I was so, so blessed just listening to him. Yes, it's true. I think he deserves a round of applause for that. Hallelujah. Believers must be active serving the Lord. Please watch this. You may be called an engineer. You may be called a medical doctor. You may be called an architect, a builder. You may be called, you know, a businessman. That is just a description of the geography of your witness. There is one name that binds all of us in Christ. As far as our function and service is concerned, we are called witnesses. Acts 1 and verse 8. It says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then it says, you shall be witnesses. Never said you will be men of God. Never said you'll be businessmen. Never said you'll be politicians. What you call business politics career is simply a description of the geography of your witness. But in Christ, we are called witnesses. A preacher is a witness on the pulpit. A businessman is a witness in the marketplace. A politician is a witness in governance. Are we together? An academician is a witness in the realm of the academia. A doctor is a witness in the hospital. And as far as medical practice is concerned, you must be more conscious of the description of your person from the lens of God's eternal perspective, not just the geography of your witness. That means when you are given an employment or you set up a firm, beyond making money, you are there to represent the purposes of the kingdom. That must become your orientation. A terrorist knows he's a terrorist, even if the terrorist is called doctor, so, 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 and so. So you can call a terrorist for, for you know, just for clarity of expression. Assuming an individual is a terrorist, he may be a doctor, a medical doctor. He spent five years, six years, ten years in medical school. But from day one, he knew he was a terrorist. He only became a doctor to give him access to the place where he would perform that role. So even though he's now a doctor, he knows that he's not a doctor to save lives. He's a terrorist who just became qualified. You are a witness who just found yourself in the business realm. Be more conscious of yourself being a witness than a money maker. Be more conscious of yourself being a witness than a politician acquiring uh, all kinds of political credentials. The Bible calls us witnesses. In fact, the Bible puts it beautifully in Mark chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16. Here's what Jesus says. Ye are the salt of the earth. He says... But if the salt has lost its savour, Matthew, 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 my apologies, Matthew 5, 13. Is the salt has lost its savour, that it is good for nothing except to be thrown down and trampled the foot of men. Then the next verse says, you are the light of the world. It says, a city that is set on a hill, which cannot be hidden. It says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that it is kept on a candlestick so that it will give light to all who are within that place then verse 16 says let your light so shine the word let means permit allow do not withhold do not restrain let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works it says and glorify your father which is in heaven hallelujah please say after me i am a witness one more time, please shout it. Say, I am a witness. A witness is a validator of a claim. When you go to the court of law, um, in making defense of your case, usually the judge will ask you to present a witness. And the assignment of the witness is to bring credence to your claim. Are we together? No witness is a true witness until he brings a token of truthfulness called an evidence. That's why God gave you power. To go to the marketplace he gave you power to do business he gave you power to heal the sick he gave you power to prosper that power becomes your evidence that you are a witness indeed service 
the meaning of that is that everyone who has contributed to making this convention a success through your prayers through your finances through your participation through your love and labor my bible says that god is a rewarder there is a name he is called hebrews 11 and verse 6 that without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto god must come believing that number one he exists and then number two that he is the rewarder god rewards god rewards i'm saying this to someone god rewards do not be surprised if someone gives you a house you did not buy it is a reward god rewards do not be surprised if god gives your children scholarship anywhere to study without your bringing one naira one dollar it is how god rewards do not be surprised if you find out that that medical report of cancer or fibroids suddenly disappears god rewards it is called the covenant of service you shall serve the lord and he shall bless you shall serve the lord and he shall bless you shall serve the lord and he shall bless you shall serve the lord and he shall bless ladies and gentlemen show me a man and a woman who has decided to be spiritually minded accepting the lordship of jesus committing to the ministry of prayer committing to the ministry of scripture show me a man and a woman who is determined to live by faith show me a man and a woman who is determined to engage praise as a lifestyle show me a man and a woman who is determined watch this now to to work service as a covenant my time is up i would have given you one more can i just give you that one more let me make it a final key the final key to entering rest roundabout is receiving the prophetic the prophetic is a mystery that can bring men into rest and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet were they established believe in the lord your god so shall you be established believe his prophets so shall you prosper the prophetic has been sadly abused in our world to the point that when you hear the name prophet now you become so irritated because it's been associated unfortunately with falsehood manipulation and so on and so forth i believe that god is working upon his church and purifying even the prophetic ministry but let me tell you this please do not because of the unfortunate things that have plagued the prophetic reject the prophetic read through church history jesus himself as the son of the living god depended on three prophets in his life to rise number one simeon the prophet number two anna the prophetess number three john the prophet who you call the baptist jesus the son of the living god needed the prophetic ministry to rise without the prophetic men cannot rise no matter your degree of encounter that is how god designed his system the prophetic does not necessarily mean walking in the office of a prophet there is the office of a prophet unbelievers especially politicians they are not saved they don't love jesus but they understand i don't know if you can just say god bless you they know the power of the prophetic as i speak over your life this morning and as our father will come maybe later on in the course of the, the convention to speak do not be familiar with the prophetic open up your heart and receive it the prophetic can rewrite the narrative of the lives of men alas master for it was borrowed and the prophet don't assume that god knows mention every area the bible says be anxious for and supplication let your someone this blood disease this cancer this high blood pressure thank god visit my business wipe my tears turn my captivity like the streams of the negative pray over the trouble in your office pray over the issue in your nation pray for nigeria go ahead and pray 
cause the spirit of untimely death that has one more minute you are praying can I give you one more prayer request I like you to list all these five areas let me list them for you the grace to be spiritually minded the grace to walk by faith the grace to engage praise as a lifestyle the grace to plunge yourself into service in the house of God especially and finally one go ahead and pray go ahead and pray now that you know these things happy are you if you do them you're talking to the Lord you're talking to the Lord your maker you're talking to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please, I want you to spare me the next five minutes. I just want to do something prophetic. This is my final session. Number one, I want to speak over you. But there are people here who have been under the yoke and the captivity of bondage my bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and then holiness and the sons of jacob to minister to those who are sick you don't have to come out or pray for you then i'll speak over our lives and i'm done god of vengeance has won my battle for me Miracles has won my battle for me. I'm a winner, man. A winner, man. It's won my battle for me. I'm a winner, man. A winner, man. It's won my battle for me. God of vengeance has won my battle for me. God of miracles has won my battle for me. I'm a winner, man. I'm a winner, man. It's won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. It's won my battle for me. Listen, there are many, many people who have not enjoyed the liberty that is in Christ because of all kinds of demonic oppressions. I want to pray for you now. And as I speak over your life, I want you to believe that those age long chains, that they must be broken forever. I want you to believe this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand upon the grace that is in this house and I decree and declare for everyone who has been a victim of witchcraft, a victim of satanic manipulation, manipulations of ancestry and every kind of satanic manipulation. My Bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. My Bible says blotting out every handwriting and the ordinances that spoke against us that he nailed it to his cross therefore i decree and declare be set free this moment in the name of jesus shout a believing amen be set free this moment in the name of jesus be set free this moment in the name of jesus every manifestation in your life that is not of god i bring it to end right now in the name of jesus Now, I'd like you to lay your hands anywhere you are trusting God for a healing. Go ahead. Let's use a minute or two to do this. Just lay your hands. If it's your head, lay your hands on your head. If it's your chest, lay your hands on your chest. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. Go ahead and believe. Go ahead and believe. Go ahead and believe. Jesus is a healing Jesus. He is able to for God had so highly exalted him and given him a name and office that is above every other name. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in the earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Therefore, I declare God's people 
in the name that is above all names let God's people go now shout a loud amen let God's people go now I decree and declare from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name blood conditions be healed in the name of Jesus migraine headaches be healed in the name of Jesus bone conditions be healed in the name of Jesus cancer be healed in the name of Jesus fibroids be healed in the name of Jesus lumbar spondylosis be healed in the name of Jesus heart conditions be corrected in the name of Jesus eye conditions be healed in Jesus name ear conditions be healed in Jesus name it doesn't matter what the sickness is it doesn't matter what the infirmity is in the name of my God who is also your God be healed this moment anyone holding a medical report that represents a death sentence because of this convention find rest in your health find rest in your health I prophesy over you you will not die you will not die I close the grave the gate of the grave on your behalf you will not die be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name now I decree and declare over your finances the spirit of the waster the spirit of poverty lack and want that only keeps you begging and borrowing by the power that raised Christ from the dead I cause that spirit right now I cause that spirit right now I pray over your family everything that wants to destroy your integrity destroy your children destroy your spouse I command it to give way right now I command it to give way right now in the name of Jesus for anyone here trusting God for a job I prophesy to you between now and the end of 2023 may my God visit you may my God surprise you make it may he make a way for you where there is no way in the name of Jesus hear me any business that is in debt anyone who is in debt financial crisis personally or corporately I call upon the God of Jeshurun in the name of Jesus may God arise and use men to wipe your tears may God arise and use men to take you out of shame in the name of Jesus hear me everyone who has what it takes to help you I call them helpers of destiny wherever they are I prophesy to the north the south the east and the west I gravitate your helpers towards you in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon whoever must send for you to bring you out of shame to bring you out of calamity and misery may my God put it in their hearts to honor you Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty I prophesy to you the, the, the days of emptiness has come to an end now by the favor of God in the name of Jesus Christ hear me believers when men say there is a casting down I prophesy to you let it be for you that there is a lifting up a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side none shall hurt you with your eyes will you see and behold the reward of the wicked in the name of Jesus Christ for someone here under the sound of my voice quarter to shame may God raise help for you in the name of Jesus Christ and if there is anyone here the spirit of death is roaming around your life roaming around your family 
to see that you don't survive and reach the end of this year that people will say this man was in this convention but he did not enter 2024 i stand in the name of jesus and i decree and declare you will live long you will live long i say it again you will live long you have no covenant with death you have no covenant with the waster in the name of jesus finally i pray for you whatever will bring your spiritual life down the bible says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor sit in the seats of the scornful it says but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that lord doth he meditate day and night he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither then it says whatsoever he doeth prospers i pray for you any destructive relationship that the devil has brought around you to destroy your passion for god to confuse you and make spirituality look like a waste i separate you from those relationships forever receive help from the lord receive mercy from the lord for someone by this time next year you return back 10 times better you return back 10 times better 10 times wiser 10 times more prosperous 10 times healthier in the name of jesus And in case I did not mention your desire, I release my faith with you. Standing upon the grace of our Father and every man of God in this place, we agree under the corporate anointing that every desire that brought you for this convention, you will never go back with it disappointed. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 112 says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth you will not give birth to weak children you will not give birth to children who will kill you in the name of jesus he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever i hope you believe in the blessing of the lord i pray for you you will not beg again i say it from the depth of my heart you will not beg again that mark of shame that is on your head that is called Ichabod everyone has said what is wrong with you where is the evidence of your serving God from today may your results answer your enemies hallelujah and in all your getting may nothing make you lose your relationship with Jesus may nothing make you lose your fire for the house of God so shall it be please wave your hands to Jesus as a sign of gratitude are you waving to the king you are also waving all your troubles goodbye you are also waving every challenge goodbye you have plagued me for long but here is rest roundabout here is rest roundabout in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray shout a loud amen thank you so very much sir for this opportunity thank you so much may the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. No man take this honor unto himself. You are the one who call, you are the one who choose. And you have chosen him at a time like this, particularly in our nation, to make him a voice and a model for the young people. Father, Lord, we ask that you who has called him, you will always stand by him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will always give him a voice. In the name of Jesus, when he binds, you will bind with him. When he loses, you will lose with him. We ask, Lord, that his anointing will never run dry. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for him as he moves up and down, both inside and outside this nation. Father, we ask that you will strengthen him spiritually and physically. He will not be weak, he will not be weary, he will not be tired. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the purpose for which you have raised him up at this time, he will fulfill and excel in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that wherever he stands to minister in your name, Father, we ask as you have always done, you will remain ever faithful to him. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we ask, Lord, that as he leaves us right now, we are asking that the peace of God and the rest on every side he has pronounced over us. Let it be his own portion in the name of Jesus. He has watered us. We ask, Lord, you will water him in return. In the mighty name of Jesus, as he hears good news and testimonies from us, we will also continue to hear good news about him and testimonies about him to the glory and praise of your name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We ask, Lord, that your presence will go with him as it goes. And your name will continually be glorified. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Oh, celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. He's faithful. He's faithful. Let somebody 